Wednesday, everybody, just one day before Thanksgiving. What are you guys thankful for this year? Family, friends, good food, whatever it is, I hope you get plenty of it tomorrow. But before we get there, I know some of you are probably in your last work day. Maybe you guys are looking forward to having these days off and you want a game to play. That's why today's Geek and Dorks review is about Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, I did a review of Tomb Raider Definitive Edition um, a few weeks ago, so you can check that out as well. A lot of what I talk about in that review applies to this one. They did a very good job of taking the game engine, expanding on it in a few places we're going to talk about, um, giving us a whole new narrative, and just much more of this fun, newly rebooted um, Tomb Raider that is a bit more respectful to women, um, has elements of almost RPG games where you can kind of grow and develop your character a bit. So let's get to it. The good, the graphics, the environments. These are lush, lush environments. Um, as a matter of fact, this game seems to have a lot of snow environments and there's just something really cool about Laura's movement. Um, she walks in the snow like she's walking in snow. You know, people walk in snow differently. Um, there's a lot more downward force and you kind of lift your legs higher. And the noise, the crunching of the snow under her boot, spot on. I mean, really takes me back. There's, I you know, live in California, so I've only been in the snow a few times. But it really brings me right back to that experience and it feels extremely authentic. Um, the gameplay in terms of action, it's all there again. Controls are extremely similar to the previous Tomb Raider. The upgrade system has been fleshed out a little more. There's some more different types of options, ways that you can customize her. Um, one of the nice touches, I thought, is now the clothing choices will affect her abilities in minor ways, but in the previous game, the clothing choices were purely aesthetic. They really didn't do anything to impact her abilities. Now. Um, they might help you heal faster, certain things like that. So I thought that was a really cool touch. Um, I do have to say the menu system just feels a little more crowded this time around. The one in the previous Tomb Raider is very elegant, very easy to understand. And this new one, just it's a bit messier. And I know they had to do that to add to some of the complexity they wanted, but I just wish they could have streamlined the menuing a little bit. It's just kind of noisy. Um, as, outside of all that, there's game modes in this that I really didn't look into all that much. There's a whole card system, and I don't know how that card system affects the game. It doesn't appear to affect the main game at all, so I don't know if it was just put in for online player. Um, I know the previous uh, Tomb Raider had an online multiplayer component. This one does not have one if you buy just the base game, but apparently it's an add-on, so you can purchase their season pass and then you'll be able to play multiplayer online and I think that's where the card system comes into play um, which is kind of a bummer because you earn all these rewards and you're looking at these cards going oh wow you know big head mode for Laura that seems kind of cool but as far as I've found you can't do that in the main game um, if you guys know any different please drop it in the comments below because I'd really like to try some of those cards out but I just couldn't figure out how to do it um, let's talk about story so the first, the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, which was really a reboot of the franchise, had an excellent story that really felt like it was kind of an Agatha Christie uh, mystery, um, maybe turned into a movie. There was just a really rich set of characters, um, a little minor spoiler, getting picked off one by one in very Agatha Christie tradition. but. It just, it was a really, really good solid story that really captured my attention and helped pull me through the main story. This one is a little lighter in terms of the story. It's still, this one is a step to more, towards the more traditional Tomb Raider that we all know. It goes a bit into Laura's backstory, her father being killed, and you kind of unravel that mystery a little bit. If the first one is like an Agatha Christie book or a movie based on an Agatha Christie book, this one is much more like, like a pop movie, almost like an Indiana Jones or maybe even a James Bond um, that have kind of been fused together. There's nothing wrong with that. It still works fairly well, but it just feels a little less than the story from the last game. Um, that being said, 
In terms of hours, I put in more hours this time around. I think it took me about 15 hours to finish it this time around. And there are so many additional side missions, um, extras that you can do that I haven't done a 100% completion on this game yet like I did with the first one. So it's given me a bit more gameplay, seems to be a bit longer in terms of that. And the story is still satisfying. You get a great villain, you want to take him out by the end. Um, there's a couple of twists along the way. So it's still all there, just like I said, it feels a bit more like you've gone to a pop movie instead of read a book or seen a movie that's based on a very good book. Um, the biggest tune-up in terms of the graphics is Laura's face. They have gone to some type of different technology where they're, it looks like they're doing motion capture on the actress while she's reading the lines. And this motion capture looks really, really good. The expressions feel extremely natural. It, they're kind of shocking when you first see them. It's like, whoa, hold on, her face is, it's like contorting with emotion and you don't get that in the previous game. She pretty much has a static, very static um, face in the previous game. This game is totally different, especially for the first half of the game. It really, um, it was a shock when I saw it over and over and over. It's a huge step in the right direction for how these games should be animated. It was really, really good work. So, I think that's about it. In terms of negatives, I can't really knock it. You know, you have a couple of issues with making sure that you're jumping the right way and sometimes she doesn't seem to understand what you want to do and she falls and dies. And I think that's just kind of um, something that comes along with these games. It's the most streamlined of all of them, so it, it really happens very infrequently. But the few times it does happen, it just always kind of, oh, it just kind of grabs you and makes you want to shake your fist at a camera. Um, <laughs> But outside of that, um, the character development, maybe you could say that's a little light. Um, but outside of that, I think it's just as great as the first one. This series is going into a whole new level. Uh, the new developers are taking very special care with the property, and I really like what they're doing. And also worth noting, this is going to be exclusive to the Xbox um, for at least a year, I believe, before it comes out on the PS4 which I guess is kind of a good deal for Xbox people. Not so fun if you're a PS4 person. Um, but hopefully when it does come out for the PS4, they will add some additional levels for you guys, tune up the graphics a bit more. And uh, in terms of development, that might not be such a bad thing, but it just means you're going to have to wait a little bit for your next dose of Ms. Croft. Um, so I think that's it. I would, give this, I would give this a 9 out of 10, quite honestly. There are very few games that I enjoy more than this series, especially for a first player um, campaign experience. Um, it's really, really solid. I don't think you're going to go wrong if you were a fan of any of the previous Tomb Raiders at any point and you're just looking to get back into it. You don't even have to play the Definitive Edition. This one really feels like it could also be a reboot of the franchise. That being said, um, I also don't think it would hurt to play them backwards. So you could play this one first, and if you enjoy it, go ahead and play the Definitive Edition later. That being said, just worth noting, the gameplay is so similar between the two, I wouldn't want you to burn yourself out. So you probably wouldn't want to play them back to back. You might want to space it with some other game in between, give yourself you know, a month or two off from Laura so that you could really enjoy those gameplay mechanics when you get back to them, um, which is really fun, very unique some good storytelling going on and it is just the game is visually stunning it is one of the best examples that i've seen on the xbox one in terms of graphics gameplay and how that all comes together so i hope you enjoyed this geek and dorks review have a great thanksgiving everyone and i'll catch you next time on the geek and dorks channel